This is Akashvani. In the program spotlight, now we bring a discussion on Chandrayaan 3, another significant milestone in India's space journey. The participants are Professor Annapurni Subramaniam, Director, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, and Sagar Kulkarni, journalist. Hello and welcome. India is making yet another attempt at landing on the moon today with the launch of Chandrayaan 3. To talk about the mission, we have with us Dr. Annapurni Subramaniam, the Director of Indian Institute of Astrophysics. Hello, Dr. Subramaniam. Hello. Uh, we would like to know why Chandrayaan 3, what India plans to demonstrate through this mission. Yeah, Chandrayaan 3 is a continuation of the series of missions to moon under the name Chandrayaan. So we had Chandrayaan 1 and then we had Chandrayaan 2 and now we have Chandrayaan 3. So Chandrayaan, there's more closeness between Chandrayaan 2 and Chandrayaan 3 because of the fact that we are trying to land on the moon. So Chandrayaan 2 had two objectives. One was to put an orbiter which will go around the moon to map the moon and second is to actually put a lander on the moon. And when the first one worked very well, and even now the orbiter is in place and it continues to function, the second one of landing on the moon did not succeed. That is, lander crash landed on the moon and uh, we could not retrieve that particular payload, the instrument. The objective of the Chandrayaan-3 is to overcome that uh, requirement of landing and putting a rover on the moon, which are prerequisites for further missions and further exploration of the moon. So in this particular mission, the science experiments, which were supposed to be carried out in Chandrayaan-2, is repeated. So we have this making use of the orbiter, the lander will land on the moon and set the rover rolling on the surface of the moon to carry out the scientific experiments which are there on the lander as well as on the rover. So basically we are trying to demonstrate that uh, we can have a soft landing on moon and also we can put a rover on the lunar surface to carry out further exactly. experiments. That was not the successful thing which happened in Chandrayaan 2. So Chandrayaan 3, the main objective is to make the landing properly and set out the rover for carrying out the scientific experiments. But in the terms of technology and engineering demonstration, it is very important to have the capability to go around the moon as well as set a lander and it can go and safely land on the part where you want it to land and carry out the functions which are required to be done at that particular point. So this is the very, very first requirement and that is why it is very important for the nation as such to achieve this goal. Could you tell us about uh, the experiments to be carried out on Chandrayaan 3? Yeah, so Chandrayaan 3, this, there will be one, the, I'll start with the Pegyan rover. So the rover will have experiments to carry out the composition of the regolith. Regolith is the name which is given to the surface of the moon, which is basically quite porous and the dust particle is actually quite like the talcum powder. So this rover will be able to penetrate an instrument which can actually dip into the regolith and carry an experiment to figure out what is the mineralogy and what is the fraction of various minerals on the surface. Second thing it also do is to understand the ionic, that is the exosphere which is there on the moon is very thin, but there are ions which are present in the surface and that with the sun hitting the moon, there will be some ionic presence and measuring those ionic content. And two other major experiments which will be carried out is to understand the how the heat is transported from one place to the other in the moon. So we know that the sunlit area can get hot and the regions which are in the shadow can be cold. But uh, since there is hardly any atmosphere and also not much of wetness, which actually is term conductive for heat, the same what we see on the earth is not applicable there. So we still have to understand how uh, what is the gradient in temperature and how heat goes from one place to the other. It is very important information. And the other information is like the moon quakes or the disturbance on the surface which can be caused by the moon quakes or by any heating of the meteorites or any particles on the moon. So how much is this stable and what kind of frequencies it vibrates, etc. are of primary importance to set up anything on the moon. So these are the experiments over there on the rover. The lander also will be taking uh, some data regarding on the surface, the pictures of the surface, etc. And there's also one more experiment which is going to be carried out to looking at the Earth itself to figure out how the Earth will appear from there and this along with the spectral signatures which are primarily useful when you want to study an Earth-like planet which is out there beyond our solar system. Chandrayaan 2 was a partial success. 
and uh, yes. but we do have an orbiter out there looking out uh, at the moon for since 2019 when chandrayaan 2 was launched so how important yes. uh, has been the contribution of the orbiter vis-a-vis -vis this mission particularly when we attempt a landing on the moon yeah so in chandrayaan 2 the idea was to put a an orbiter and then take its help to communicate to the lander when it goes down yeah. so though the lander did not uh, land properly the orbiter has been doing its job wonderfully well and we have an extremely high resolution image of the surface of the moon and uh, it is still functioning and it is still beaming down the data and now in this case we don't have an orbiter but the orbiter is a prerequisite for communication so the this chandrayaan 3 mission will be actually using the orbiter of the chandrayaan 2 mission to for communication purposes when it descends down onto the surface of the moon so chandrayaan 2 is enormously successful and the detailed map of the area where this lander is going to land is already provided by the chandrayaan 2 orbiter and in fact when the chandrayaan 2 lander went we did not have a great detailed map of the region where it is going to land but now we are better informed and better data regarding the landing site and so this has greatly helped in the planning and execution of this lander in chandrayaan 3 should we see chandrayaan 3 or the chandrayaan series of missions as a precursor to the future space exploration missions by isro yes definitely because that is indeed the vision when we started off with the chandrayaan 1 and though chandrayaan took a while to go but then you can see that the uh, the missions and the with the renewed uh, interest in space exploration as well as planetary exploration it is actually going to increase so this is indeed a important milestone and this will definitely boost a lot of our confidence as well as ability to do things on the surface of the moon as well as what we can do on the even on the surface of the mars etc so it's a very important milestone and it is really going to change how we the outlook of what india can do with the space program especially regarding the planetary missions ma'am isro is also planning a mission to the sun aditya l1 which is expected to launch next month could you share some details why studying the sun is so important to us so the isro is actually doing two missions side by side one to the moon and one to the sun so the importance of sun is that the we have been living with the sun and this is the nearest star for us and uh, it gives provides us with energy and uh, all the required uh, supply of uh, light and energy etc for life to uh, continue on the earth but at the same time the sun is also can be a bit violent and uh, we have seen episodes of sun burping or you know uh, throwing out plasma which is actually quite harmful to the certain things like our satellites out there in space and also power grid near the poles of the earth so this is a kind of an activity which sun does periodically and uh, the indian institute of astrophysics i mean where i am the current director has been studying the sun for more than 100 years now we have studied the sun for more than 100 years by taking its pictures and we understand fairly well that sun goes through a 11 year cycle now in this 11 year cycle sun goes through you know active periods when there are more of these burps and the more of this we call it as the coronal mass ejections happen and some periods of low activity when these events are low and the next few years sun is going to be active and we expect more and more of this plasma outburst to come from the sun now if you want to study those ejections very carefully they you can see them very clearly during the total solar eclipse or when you can actually see the corona so it's very important to see the corona and study them there are many instruments which are planned on board the aditya spacecraft and uh, this is to study the sun the origins of this activity as well as how the the coronal mass ejections travel through the corona and also how it is reaching to uh, the earth because this instrument is going to be placed at the l1 lagrange point which is 1.5 million kilometers towards the sun from the earth and this is the first mission isro is doing to this lagrange point l1 so the instruments over there will be collecting the data which is coming from the sun as well as collecting the data in situ that is the number of particles etc present at that particular point l1 and then beaming to earth so this is a unique mission and it will help us to understand more about the sun its space weather that's what we call and also how we can protect our space instruments up in space against the harmful particles coming from the sun as part of the coronal mass ejections Ma'am, international collaboration has been a part of space missions, and recently India signed the Artemis Accords during the Prime Minister's visit to the United States. 
how will this cooperation and collaboration help in further science the international collaborations are extremely important in science because going forward where we have to do quite challenging and quite resource intensive projects one nation will not be capable to do all alone with its financial power or its technological power or scientific power so it is important for nations to combine together to do it and when we do so it has to be like you know how the agreement between the partnerships the details of it and when it comes to how you use the data etc have to be put in place so artemis accord is a one direction because like exploring the arctic regions or antarctic region or exploring the the moon surface is also to be done in a a joint way and also there has to be an accord where people collaborate and cooperate in these kind of things so there india signing this accord is extremely important and in future i can see in, uh, definitely already there are mega science projects where nations come together to perform this project because of the reasons i mentioned earlier now moving forward more such things are required because this will be a collective effort of all the nations together for planetary explorations and expeditions etc so this is an important step and international cooperation in science is extremely important and i think it will make more progress in the future so when the space program started uh, we saw the focus was mainly on applications uh, and uh, reaching out to the people like uh, through initiatives such as telemedicine and television applications so now we see a definite shift that isro has taken to science missions how important is this shift according to you Yeah so India as a developing country initially the space was mainly used for everyone's benefit so mainly the thrust was to map the observation or you know climate predictions or cyclonic predictions or trying finding out where the fish can be in the sea and giving information to the fishermen to go and i mean you know where they should be looking for etc etc so that is directly giving benefit to it so there you can actually put a, a norbit or rather you know in a lower orbit you can actually map it but at the same time when you have to go to things which are beyond that then you have to understand what exactly is the scenario out there which basically comes from science such as space sciences including astronomy and astrophysics and uh, as you can see the other nations are also moving forward and trying to find out what is out there so this is a very important step and uh, understanding that and now we have the capability to send uh, not only the instruments to look down on the earth but also instruments capable of to carry out science observations from space like the space telescopes which was majorly achieved by the launch of astrosat it proved that you can actually we have the scientific capability to integrate a very complex science instrument on the ground launch it and operate it get the data and then disseminate it and do science so entire the ecosystem of or rather the entire pipeline was starting from concept to a realization to the deployment to actually deriving science out of it so this was a demonstration and uh, the combining the technical capability and the science advancement which uh, on the ground people can do it is a good combination of this we are trying to put it in space and do the space astronomy or space sciences etc so as you can see other nations are also moving in this uh, way and i'm happy that the india is also moving in that direction and it is very important and as you can see the planetary missions are very very important step because it is going to be the next few decades is going to dominate the scene so our capability is important and uh, investment and uh, initiatives in this direction also are very important in the next couple of decades thank you dr subramanyam for talking to us thank you so much you were listening to a discussion on chandrayaan 3 another significant milestone in india space journey the participants were professor annapurni subramanyam director indian institute of astrophysics and sagar kulkarni journalist this program was produced and presented by the news services division of akashvani you can listen to it on a mobile app news on air this program is also available on a youtube channel news on air official you may share your feedback about this program through email at airnsdtalks@gmail.com or whatsapp on 92890940